Okay, hello, this is um, Lizwig on YouTube. And I'd just like to say this is my first ever video recording of, well, of a how to video. And I hope this will be a use to someone using Photoshop. Well, first off, um, the version of Photoshop I'm using is CS4. And if you actually, if you don't have Photoshop, I can actually provide a link for it to the version that I'm using. Um, just simply message me, or I'll add an annotation to the video later on. And in this how-to video, I will show you how to create something a lot like this. Well, first up, and also, um. This can, this can easily be done by using a graphics tablet or mouse by itself. I am currently going to be doing this by mouse just so that it's show you how easy it can be even without a graphics tablet. Okay, let's get started. But, um, open up Photoshop and create a new document. I've already opened one up, but for the the size you want it is width of 1800 pixels and a height of 1200 pixels, 70, bleh, nope, 1200 pixels, I was right the first time, which could also equal such, and um, put a re resolution of 600 pixels. Okay. Would you like to, um, okay, first off, we've got a white background, so we need to just fill that in with black, simple enough. There you go. And I'm gonna create a new folder, add a new layer, and we're gonna go to the circle marquee tool, which is basically the circle selection tool, as I like to call it. I'm not very professional at this, as you can tell. And you're just going to do that. If you hold down the shift button while doing so, this is um, the computer uh, for Windows, by the way. I don't know what it is for Mac. But I'm sure whoever owns a Mac will know the difference. Anyway, and so holding down shift, you can see it keeps it in a perfect set up circle. We're gonna have about that size, and we're gonna choose foreground and background colors. You can have this any color you want. I'm personally gonna get. I think for this demonstration, I'm gonna go for some reds. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry about the lag. It's just um, I'm using Procaster, uh, Procaster on the live stream, and my computer doesn't work with it very well. Great tool. Going to need to do, use the second option here. I forgot what it's called, but we also need and select like that, so the light colours first, and from the point set which is here, put it out, and you should have something for that in any colour you want. Add a new layer, go back to there, um, go back to the standard setting colours, which you can just press by that, then little selection there, and we want black to transparent. Okay, now you select reverse, so it switches around. Do the same as before, and here you have a nice shaded sphere, sort of. And you can change the opacity to your liking. Of course. Um, also, I tend to like to use the um, layer effects or layer style, as it's um, saying to me there. And by adding in a shadow, on this is on the first side, by the way. Um, first is 100 in a shadow. Um, distance, not. And add about any distance you want. I'll put it as 40. You see, it's got a bit more darker edge. And the outer glow. Now I switch this to normal, put it on the 100 for now, you can change 
go to red or blue, green, purple, whatever you chose, pink. Not my personal favourite. Just expand it, put it on 100. Throw the opacity, I'll put it 60. Okay, that's okay. Then you can add a new, another layer. Now you can, this is where you uh, you can add your details to it. For this demonstration, I'm going to use clouds. Uh, brushes, I will provide a link for in video or in the description below the video. Um, these can be found on DeviantArt. Sample and see. Change this to white or any other colour. They have to be careful, sometimes they don't show up very well. So I'm just going to do this. Add some else in it. Just keep doing this till you're quite happy with what you've got. So I'm, I'm quite happy with that. And set so blending mode to overlay. Have something like that. Now to get the circle source of effect on it, we need to go to the filter. Distort and spherize. No, you don't have to do anything with this, you just leave it on the default settings as normal and click OK. And now it's more circular. Now from here, just add a new layer. You're going to need a gradient tool again, but this time on the first setting, and you can remove the reverse of that. Now you can either fill the selection you already have with a gradient or do undo or that's uh, control alt z in Photoshop or you can deselect go to the size that you want shift normal otherwise whatever you want, do so, and add a gradient, obviously that's the wrong way around, it work, works either way, but um, for the purpose of this, it's got to be it's this way around, find my errors, uh, I'm using, I don't know what that tool is, move tool, I think it's move tool, Move it about. Use it by hand. Also, the arrow keys on the keyboard, you can move it like so. If you can see it moving there, I don't know if the lag's starting to get to it. But other, other than that, just, um, we turn the fill to 50, which is the basics. And deselect. And here we have your basic orb thing. And since Hold on. Um, add another layer. Should have done this first. By the way, sorry. Um, but well, you can do it now. Doesn't matter. Add another set color you want. Um, this is sort of like a bonus sort of thing. You don't actually have to do it. Works either way. Um, using the color to transparent. Um, such an effect, you can change your opacity to it, turn it off, voila, and so. The reason I, um, I told you to put it into a group in the first place because when you can also, this it makes it tidier, of course, and you can just select the group itself and then you can move all of it at once to wherever you want to put it on the page, and such. Okay, I'm moving it back to where I want it and add a new layer. Okay, so your foreground colour is going to be, need to be white because um, now we're going to be using the pen tool. But first, 
on your brush I already have um, this preset um, a 6 there and 12 there cause, um, okay. and in settings once being shape dynamics you need these off but the angle jitter needs to be up at 54% it just makes it look nicer but as I say once you've got that go to the pen tool and go from here say here and you've got a line and now to use a pen tool you, have to, you simply click it but to move it as you can see the mouse is changing there that's whenever you um, press control holding control and selecting your anchor point you can move it add another one here now you can just select these, this you know move it about make it sure it's curved also if the one's not showing you can just simply with control hold down you can just get it back Okay. I have seemed to have messed this one up a bit my bad Right, there you go and um, stroke it stroke path stroke it, it's not a cat um, you want the sim stimulate, simulate pressure, so OK. OK, delete path. Something similar, roughly like that. Um, if you don't like it, you can just delete layer, start again. But for every time we do one of these, you can just select um, a new layer so you don't, because they're probably going to be overlapping in places. And if you don't like what you've done and you can't get rid of it, then you just simply delete the layer, make a new one, create it again. So we're gonna do a few more of these. If you have any questions at all, you can just um, simply comment below or message me with any queries. can take maybe a few minutes but it's well worth the while ok that was because that was on 6 setting brush now I'm just going to go to the 12 obviously the lines will be thicker You don't have to copy me exactly, you can be as creative as you want. This tends to work um, for most pathways, I've found. 
there, there are chances that you probably find one that doesn't work and you just um, end off that one. But, you know, feel free to experiment with this. You know, stick, this is just, you know, general basics. I'm not exactly a professional myself, I'm probably a beginner like you are. I just found um, my friend wanting to do something like this, so I thought I'd create a little how to video on how to do it. Well, I'm quite happy with this. Okay. And to move it all in one layer, you can probably just, you know, merge down multiple times, but for the um, time's sake, you can just remove those from view, select this, and merge visible. Now, they're all into one layer. As you can see. Now we're going to go into layer effects and we're going to create sort of like a neon colour to it. So we want the outer glow. Remember this can be any colour that you want. So light colour so red. And we want to put this to normal. About 18 20 ish, that sort of frame, B colour, change the opacity to how you like it. I'll leave it on 100. You want the inner glow, which you need to put to 1, um, normal. Uh, you can change the colour to I'm going to change it to something a bit darker or yeah also you can get the preview and such there change your opacity if you want it I'm going to change it a bit to there and we want the drop shadow that effect. So you can move it distance to whatever you like, opacity to 100, get that dark sort of colour size. Yeah, I wouldn't touch that. Um, at four ish, whatever you feel looks best for your image, and click OK. And we're going to create a new layer. You select that one, um, your previous layer and you want to copy layer style, then select the new layer and paste layer style so you've got the same effects that the previous layer has. And using you know, standard brush tool, you know, settings 12, 6, any, just using the um, make sure it's got the 54% jitter um, effect on it, and place the dots wherever you like. Now I'm not very good with placements. Maybe take a few tries. Such. Move it back to small brush, just adding small ones in, those you know, nice sparkly. So, yeah, something that should be sparkly, not that stupid Twilight Vampire, whatever the hell that is. And go. Such, um, you could probably I've got the four brush, same settings, you know, just little, little smaller dots, whatever you like them. Ok, 
because this is your drawing, you don't have to. Try it again. And there you have it. Oh, one more thing. Um, just go to, back to the standard colours. Put the gradient on, you want first selection, um, black to white gradient. Obviously didn't want that, but obviously decided it wanted to bring that up. And from here, Wherever you want, um, I want to put that on the reverse. Okay. Set to overlay. Bit bright there, as you can see. Just change your opacity. Twelve, you like it. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, there's the first one, and here's the example I made earlier. This is blue, red, and that will be the end of this how-to video. This is Liz with on YouTube.